right, welcome back. Welcome back to implementation of uh, OS0 into your Flutter application, or in other words, uh, adding a login and authentication to your application using the standard OAuth um, 2.0 and OpenID Connect. So I hope that you already checked uh, other videos. If you have not, if you are coming to this video for the first time, I have uh, other videos explaining the theory behind it, explaining the project. Uh, please go ahead and check them out. And otherwise, uh, if you have watched them, uh, so welcome to this episode and let's continue. First thing we want to do here is that we are going to create uh, a, a few things. The most important thing here is that we're going to have uh, an HTTP request and also we're going to have implementing, let's say, the OpenID Connect, right, standard. You can do that yourself, definitely. You can handle everything yourself. But luckily, in Flutter World, we have some packages that is handling uh, the app auth. And the app auth is actually, so it's actually a package, an SDK for um, native apps for authorization and authentication. So this is the website. I just want to quickly show you. Uh, app auth IO is a native SDK for OAuth and OpenID Connect, as you see. And well, you have even a JavaScript implementation of that. Everything is work. It's just following the best practices. And it's a lot of work behind this uh, for sure. And I, I strongly suggest to use this. However, if you want to use this in your Flutter, then you, sh you should not use the SDK directly because you want to actually support other platform tools. So here is the package that we're going to talk about. So this is the package as of now version 2.4. Uh, you can see that now um, it's actually a bridge for app auth, as I mentioned. Uh, so we're making sure that that is actually uh, following the best practices, the standard pretty well. So this is a Flutter port of that, which is very interesting and very important. And... Uh, that's very nice. My article is also somewhere here. That's very nice. I have a very extensive article about uh, OpenID Connect and Auth0 in, um, sorry, uh, OAuth2 and OpenID Connect in Auth0. So you can watch that out uh, or maybe you can read that out. I will put the link below. So we're going to use this and I will show you how. Uh, let's do that. So what we're going to do now, we're just going to go to PowerSpec YAML file. <clears throat> and as we go for the tutorial, I think I want to also show you some tips and tricks if you are not familiar uh, familiar with that, because that's that's uh, helping you to be more productive with Flutter. This is my uh, favorite part of developing with Flutter, of course. One thing that we're going to add, as I said, it's a Flutter app auth, right? So we're going to add Flutter app auth, but what... Well, the first thing is you can copy that, paste that from where? Yes, pop.dev. But what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to actually open up my command palette. I'm using Mac and I'm using a VS Code right now. So the command palette is command, shift, and um, uh, P. Command, shift, P. But if you are using other editors or if you are using uh, Windows, it must be probably control, shift, P. Take into account there is a command palette and there is actually a command somewhere in your editor. You can find it as named Dart, add dependencies, add dev dependencies. This is coming from the latest version of the Dart plugin for your editor. At, uh, it's popping up in your VS Code if you install that. Updates if, you, are, if the, you don't have the latest version and you will get this. It's a good thing that you should have because then when you say add dependency and you can actually search for Flutter, you can look at this app auth and it's just showing you that what you want, right? So it's very cool. Then I can choose it, select it, will install it, download it, add it to my dependency. And that's a way you don't need to leave your editor and go to pop.dev, right? So now it's added the last version as you see. 
I also want uh, HTTP because we might have other requests later. Um, so that's why I, I need that. Uh, but uh, one thing that I want to do later is that the, the app us helping me to open up all of those native UIs and, you know, the get the token back and stuff. But then when you want to receive the user info, I hope that you watch the video about the theory of, of OAuth 2. So if you want to get the user info, then you need to make some HTTP calls. So I'm going to add HTTP to my dependency as well. This is one thing that I definitely know we're going to need later. So that's the package that I want. And another thing that I, we want here is when we receive a token, that's good. You don't want to actually all the time request for user to get a new token, right? You want to store it securely to your application. That's the time I think we want to implement a secure storage to store our, you know, data. So let's go for it and then add Flutter secure storage. So these are at least uh, the minimum dependencies that I need. And uh, let's continue um, now implementing our callback. You remember, hopefully, that from my slides, that you're going to need to define your callback URL, right? And then that must be registered into your backend as well which our backend in this case is OS0, right? We will go to OS0 and implement that there. But how can you define and add, add that to your project in your Android and iOS is very simple, to be honest. First of all, let's have a, a, let's have a comment section here. How does uh, look um, a callback in a native application? Like in a web application, you're going to have HTTP and a URL over there. That's fine. But then in a mobile application, you don't have such things. You have bundle ID. So your unique bundle ID here. So here is the case. I will write it here for you. So for example, your bundle ID in this case is mjcoffee.app. We're going to define, uh, figure out. And then your callback will be this schema and then colon, colon, like your callback, let's say something like that. This is something that we should define and tell our both Android and iOS to recognize it, uh, let's say. All right, so what we're going to do now, uh, we are going to move to the Android section of it. Let's see how we can define a callback in our Android. I'm going to open up my Android. And look at this right now. I just searched for it. I look on the look at for Android and then, um, well, actually build.gradle. So you have one under Android and you have another one under app. You want that one that is under app. This is defining your uh, configuration for your uh, build uh, gradle file. There is a section here called default config the section that we are looking for and let's take a look at that right now i will move this a little bit further so here is my application id this is my unique uh, application bundler id well which is fine and that's exactly what we want to use for our schemas we'll copy that right now and i will add here a section so what we will need to do is, first of all, you need to make sure that the uh, multi-dex is enabled. It's actually, it is, but uh, well, I think to making sure what you can do, you can just say uh, multi-dex um, enabled, and then you can say true. There you go. Another thing here is that the Flutter app auth package is working with minimum SDK of 18. As of now, it might even increase later. Therefore, the minimum SDK is pretty important. 
Flutter now comes with minimum SDK of 16. So perhaps we need to change that. There are two ways of changing that. Either you can remove this and say 18, and this one, for example, 20, 30 or 29, or you can go to your uh, local property, and then here, then uh, define um, here minimum SDK of like, you can say 21 and the same thing you can copy here and you can say this is 30 for now right um that's one way of doing that or you can directly come here and then say well i want 21 for this and 30 for this well both is valid it's up to you so that's uh, one thing that I wanted to uh, mention right now. So now, now, so you are pretty good for Android, but there are a bunch of things that you need to do. Uh, one thing here is you need to define a manifest placeholder where you are defining your app auth redirect schema. That's uh, the schema of the code. So you need to do that so your application knows uh, what is approved. Uh, so the manifest uh, placeholders here in this case would be uh, app auth redirect scheme. Um, I hope that scheme, yeah. And then that's definitely the scheme that you want. I will stick to my um, unique bundler ID. And uh, that's pretty much it. So you're good to go right now. Um, you have everything that you want. Uh, so nothing stops you. So we can move on to define the same, to configure the same callback for iOS. Now I have my app auth redirect schema in manifest placeholder here. I want to have the same thing for um, um, my iOS. Again, there are two ways of doing that for iOS. So you can go to your um, iOS folder, open it with VS Code uh, if you want, uh, not VS Code, sorry, Xcode. You can do that there. Or I'd just like to keep everything in my editor. I will just open this in my uh, here. You need to open info.plist. So open this file. Very good. Yeah, everything is here, I see. And then, well, you need to define your bundle uh, URL type. So CP or is bundle, there is nothing here. But as you can see, the unique ID, uh, it's, it's not even here. That's fine. We'll can define that as well. But let's let's actually quickly define another uh, key here. So I, I will do that here quickly. Um, let's do that. Let's let's call it a key. And the key name is um, CF. And that's what I'm reading right now. So just not to mess it up. It's C name bundle URL type. And it's coming uh, as you see, where is it? Uh, URL type. It's actually coming as you see here to help me. So URL types. That's good. So this is an A. But now that is going to accept an array, right? So that's an array. And you're going to actually define this as an array here. You can say uh, now you have at least this. You close this. That's good. Let me just uh, give it a, a little bit of uh, styling. And then you're going to have in your dict uh, a key again, which is going to define your bundle role. And that's uh, it's also important to have a bundle a type role as an editor. And you need to define your scheme. So these are two things that you need to do. So let's do that. CF. It's a list of uh, CF, uh, you know, uh, keys here. So you can actually have that bundle. Uh, 
type role and bundle type role and then you need to have a string here which is going to be editor i'll show you how you can do that in xcode as well then if it's easier for you you go ahead and do that so let's have cf uh, bundle url and schemes um, and then here is going to be an array nice and then here is going to be a string and that's exactly the bundle id that you define this is exactly the same as my android uh, version so luckily i can just um, copy that here there you go so at this point uh, you must be uh, like um, very let's say good to go so there's nothing here everything it looks fine editor you added schemas added everything you added so so far so good so what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna make sure that now my alt uh, my app is building again so now it's uh, running here which is good everything is fine so i'm gonna just have a hot restart and maybe i can stop and start again so that's not a problem everything looks pretty fine so let's uh, move on to the now this part was the first step now the second step now you define your schemas and you define uh, everything in your app you need to define this callback with the schema that you added to your auth zero and that also can be in any other backend that is implementing OAuth uh, standard as your server right that's all important that you need to register that uh, so what we want to do right now this is um this is my uh like r zero right so i'm just gonna go and log in so not to record this i will just move it here and i will log in quickly and there you go so now i have logged in so let me make this a little bit bigger a little bit smaller there you go so this is nice so what we can do we can go and actually create an application so i already have in my account a bunch of application which is now blurred you should not see them um that's not nothing really fancy and important it's nothing is secret when i'm recording this stuff except that the secret token that uh, i will also um, blur them so but here is the things that you can do together right now actually i can go to uh, create an application and there are different um let's say part that uh, different application types and these are reflecting those mm, types uh, or those flows that we talked about it if you remember what we want to do we want to create a native application that's going to use the you know pixie and all those flows that we explained i'm gonna go and um well i didn't give it a name i should have given the name but that's fine my app let's say and now i have created this uh, this client id is the one that i need that is that is very fine i can actually share with you that's nothing important um better to hide it but well it's a client id so you should share it with client anyway and then i can go to connection and you look at this connection the connection is where you enable how this application is going to let your user be authenticated either it should be via social media or maybe a username password which the database is stored here under user management you can even have an external uh, by the way db if you want but we're not going to go through that it's, this is not about all serious about authentication so i have already set up apple and all google OS. we ha will have two videos for showing you how you can set up apple and or uh, google OS, and then add them to your open uh, to your application we will have even more 
uh, because actually open ID, um, us zero is supporting way more social connection. If I click there, these are all the connection that you can add. I will make a video for, you will receive those videos for Google, Facebook, Apple, Microsoft, LinkedIn, GitHub, and maybe Twitter. So these are the ones that we will, you will receive how you can set them up in your Auth0. But for now, we're going to go to the application that we just created and go to the connection and make sure you at least uh, enable user and password, at least enable one of them uh, because you want your user to log in, right? Or sign up. And if you go to setting, well, here is the part. The domain, you don't see it now. It's blurred because it's very sensitive data. And also a client ID and your secret. These are sensitive that you don't see them. Um, these are the things that, um, well, at the moment you might see them because I will remove this application after this tutorial. But these are the things that you will need in especially domain and client ID for backend. If you have any APIs, you will use also secret, but not for Flutter or your application. You can do a bunch of things here, change the setting logos, etc., etc. One thing that particularly we do need to do is allowing a callback URL where after the authentication is done, how can like this a token will be redirected and user will receive that. That is your application, right? And that's the one we uh, talk about it, like in the beginning. This is going to be your, of course, a schema, and you're going to have callback uh, or, well, you can say login callback. You need to have these URL registered here, otherwise you're not able to fully uh, finalize you know the section let's go and in fact uh, i'm gonna copy this again let's go and save this we'll uh we will come back to this oh well okay there is a thing here so this is not a valid uh actually callback so we need to remove this part. So, and possibly even this part. But let's give it a try. Yeah, you cannot have the underline uh, in the third part. I think if I just go and for this one, like remove all of this, Yeah, that must be fine. So that was the problem. So it's a good thing that you you now we notice and you know. I actually wanted to record this as well. So I'm going to go and remove uh, the whole thing here. Just keep uh, maybe this one. And now with, uh, with this that we are saving, we're actually good to go. But remember, you're now changing the callback, the schema. You need to go back to your iOS and Android. We're going to do that quickly. I'm going to go and save this. Good. And now I will go back and quickly here, I'll uh, fix my, I will just remove this. And that's fine. Well, you can also update this one if you want. That is fine. And now to just make it easier, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just copy the whole thing. There are a bunch of places that we have this, right? So we're going to remove this. We're going to go there and remove this. So just, I just want to make it consistent. It's nothing wrong to keep that though, but just being consistent, I think it's much better. Um, then. Yeah, that's actually a package name. That's not really, uh, well, 
important, but then let's do that. And let's do that. And then here is the iOS part. That's actually the important one. We added together. I'm going to remove this. And there was one more. Well, that's also not really important, but uh, it's nice to add that. All right. So uh, good. So now I'm good. So I think to just make sure everything is working, we're going to stop this. I will explain the rest and then let uh, the app to rebuild again. So the good thing here is that when we you watch this, you will get the whole uh, recording, uh, sorry, the, the source code. So you can actually come back to the source code and copy and paste all of this. You don't need to do uh, again and again and then, you know, write all of that, right? So now we registered our callback, we register our schemas and everything else. It's time to define our services. What do we need? We need domains, a domain that I mentioned, and we need the client ID that I mentioned. And we consider these two as sensitive data, right? So even though you are actually passing them to, you know, your application, one sensitive data. Another thing here is that we consider them as an environmental, let's say, application data. Why? Well, because that's the important things to know because you're going to test your application in production, staging, and, you know, different environments. You need to pass this depends on your environment. You want to set up an environment, right? That's the reason you need to find a way to pass these variables or these environmental variables to your application. As of now, we're just going to copy the domain. How, how we want to do that in Flutter, it's actually very simple. Um, if you run your application, let's say, if you are running your application all the time, or you're building via command line, like Flutter run dash all, like run everything. So if you look at it right now, you'll see that uh, now I'm passing you can use Dart Define. So the Dart Define here, I'm passing in the, like my, uh, let's say, uh, command line. But I don't like, I, I don't actually pass right now via command line. So there is another way to do that. Well, another way that is, okay, my application is also building. That is a good news. I'm going to go to my VS Code because I'm using VS Code to my launch. And then I will actually define this in my launch um i already yeah there you go so here is for example how can you do that in debug like in all of them you have an uh something here called args and then it accept like this and then you can pass now dart define let's copy that from here it's way easier from the command line, I, I wrote it already. So then let's do that. So what you need to do, you need to pass this as like the first member and this, the second one, and then again, like this and this. What it does right now, if I run my application with launch, it adds this auth domains and auth zero client to my environment. So now, now I can get those uh, to my environment. Let's quickly uh, see how you can get this. I have not actually run them yet, but I will. Okay, so now I have uh, actually one file under helpers called constant. Here is where I want to define my constant. What I can do here, I can just go and say, uh, what was the, the variable name? Uh, so here is 
let's let's look at that there you go so i defined it as domain uh, or auth zero domain that's good so let's let's actually copy that come here auth zero domain and then i can go string dot n n oh from string dot from and viron men there you go here is how you can get a variable from environment that's in a string so i get it from there and another one was client id i just name it the same thing put it there well, that's good all right now that i define this uh you know uh, the constants and i'm getting that from environment i'm uh, going to run my application so there we go let's see if i can run the application so definitely on debug mode because that's the only time that i define this dark mode so you need to pass this dart define in all of your environment you can use other approaches for that as well you can even hard code that based on different environment but you can pass also via command line as I showed you with Dart defined, you know, arguments. I use that one, but feel free to use any other way that you can pass or even maybe hard code them to your application as your constant based on different environment. All right. So there are a bunch of other things that we need to do now together. Because when you are going to implement OAuth and OpenID Connect, so now it's actually running the application. Let's make this a bit bigger. I want to remove this and go there. Also, when you are defining uh, your um, uh, OpenID Connect and OAuth, then there are things that you need to remember. First is to remember how to set up. <clears throat> How to get your domain what is the domain and then another one is the client id and then another one is the issuer <clears throat> the issuer is in fact let's actually see that um i actually name everything uh, auth zero but doesn't matter you can actually call anything else issuer is in fact it's very simple it's a, a url of your um auth domain there you go this is the issue or https as of now it must be https by the way then you're gonna have the bundler um bundler identifier right so it's gonna be this is your bundler identifier the ones that you added to your schemas and everywhere so you will name them as bundle ID or identifier. What was it? I bet you remember. Oh, if you don't, then you can just go to you can just go to maybe um, this page and then copy this one so that's your bundle identifier and then the last one is how to create this callback so the callback to you registered right but that's based on the bundle identifier the bundle identifier and then the schema that must match right this is very important so then us zero uh, redirect uri so technically it's gonna be like um https uh, oh no not sorry so it, it actually not https it's actually bundle identifier where there you go um dot dot slash uh, dot dot slash the login callback this is <clears throat> and also it seems like the app is running very uh, it's running so yeah it's coming and it's no problem that's good so that means we 
installed everything correctly. So these are the things that I needed, but that's good. So I already have everything that I need. If you are going to use any other issuer, like if you don't use uh, any other server, if you don't use Auth0, you still need these values. You still need domain. You still need a client ID. You still need issuer. You still need uh, identifier and you still need redirect callback, which this callback must be registered in the server as an allowed callback URI with your bundle identifier, which is matched with the schemas that you defined in plist and you defined in uh, build gratify as a schema. Okay. So this is uh, this is exciting. So now the only thing here is that I need to integrate uh, and just open up my integrate to this uh, you know application and just click on this login and open up you know the login part. Let's do that now. I already created um, um, a service that is good. So what I'm gonna do here. I'm going to go and actually create. So I already create this service. This is a simple immutable singleton. So that's pretty fine. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to actually um, instantiate the app auth. And, you know, looking at this uh, documentation right now, it seems pretty straightforward. What we need to do, we're going to just say here, we're going to just say um, like app auth and it's going to be flutter app off. We're going to need to have at least uh, one instance here, and then we're going to have another. So when we get a token, you remember, we want to store it somewhere, but let's, let's get back to that later, maybe. But mm, let's just open up, uh, you know, the, the, the <clears throat> uh, logging uh, page first. All right. One thing that I want to mention, and I mentioned in the theory, is that um, OpenID Connect actually has a protocol um, that named OpenID Connect Discovery. I'm going to show you something quickly here. So this is again based on standard, and it's very important that you know and understand this. If you look at this here, it says that the OpenID Connect discovery document can be found under your domain dot well OpenID configuration. And here is the fact. In fact, um, this app, uh, Flutter app or maybe any other standard, they know this is a standard, these packages, and then they go and check them out. I want to show you uh, a quick overview of this very quickly uh let's say my domain was i will open it here and then i will bring it back to you there okay so my domain was this right and then based on this it says you can have dot well OpenID configuration. So that is the configuration which a standard is giving me. There you go. Everything is there. All the things that you need or that package needs to uh, open up, you know, and get everything that they need is already under the configuration. If you are implementing that yourself, it's all a lot of work, but luckily, uh, this is something that standard provides and the server provides and you can actually receive from them and, you know, just continue um, implementing without uh, bothering this at all. But I just wanted to talk about the discovery uh, standard document. So you now know uh, how this is going to work exactly behind the scenes. Okay. So then in the... Uh, let's say um, this uh, Flutter, uh, let's say this uh, app auth, then what we want to do, we want to authorize. So we're going to go to the login part right now. As of now, I will just comment this. I will just say 
this is going to be um uh let's say i want to get a token request right i just want to say authorize there are something that you need to take into account Le let's look at this authorization token request this is what you need to do you need an authorization token so that's what you need to do then that's good I will actually make this as a variable that is going to be here but there are something that you need to pass here like one of them is well the first thing let's take a look at the implementation the client id and the redirect uri are mandatory you cannot skip them the rest are pretty much here you can pass even discovery url if you have issuer and etc and so on and so forth but these two are mandatory so then let's do that let's the first one is client id so i'm gonna actually pass my uh client id and the second one is the redirect uri so like uh, so auth uh, redirect uri and if you look at the rest like for example issuer we can pass issuer and it was we already created issuer right so now we can have issue or it's also also important here that what do you want to ex uh, receive like the scope is important again go back to my um, previous video about like the standard and learn about the scope over there but then here what we want to ask uh, first of all is open id well that's the scope another thing is we want to receive maybe a little bit of profile we want uh, email and you know offline access these are the things that uh, i can request offline access i want because i want to make this in a way that works when user is every time logging to refresh token and stuff like that we get to that don't worry about it so these are the profile but here is the things now i request this i get the token back what should i do so if you look at this right now this is the request that i generated like right now i need to um call the app uh let's say auth that i created the instance with um authorize an exchange code so then the whole flow will start let's do that so i'm gonna go and say uh, please uh, let's say app auth just i have a bunch of things here i want authorize and code exchange we talked about it in other videos and slides right here is the request the request is the one that i created on top good this is actually if you look at it this is uh future this is synchronous so i uh sorry future so i need to actually uh, wait for that therefore i need to make this sync await and that is my result and my result might be even null that's fine let's actually print this out i just want to see if everything together works let's restart and take a look at what we see i made a hot restart and then i'm gonna click on this voila now something is coming so it says your application is going to use auth0com to sign in. Do you want to continue? There you go. Looks like everything is working pretty well. So I have my debug here, some logos. Well, it was my account. I just defined them. I have both Google and Apple and a sign in login here that is fantastic now if i continue and even sign up let's see if i can sign up let's say hmm a cool dot here and then maybe a password well i you don't want to see that oh it must be very strong password these are the things that you can define in us zero okay that seems to be working now very good and there you go let's move on 
and continue. Perfect. So let's look at the print, the console. It says authorization token respond. So you received something. That is fantastic. So, well, that was the first shot. Um, very nice. We got the response. So there are a bunch of things. Now it's time to do. Everything is working very fine. So we are, I'm asking for the scope. I get a scope. I even sign up and logged in. Um, so let's take a look at the respond type. So what do we have here? We have result authorization additional parameter access token that's very important access token expiration date time id token refresh token scopes token additional parameters token type voila everything that you learned so far is popping up here so now what we need to do is we actually need uh, um to um kind of store uh, let first of all when we have this back, we need to maybe log in, change the login and log in user. Let's actually give it a try. So now I can again click, go there, and voila, there we go. Now everything is working. Perfect. We got this application to work. Let's move on to the next video and let's implement uh, refresh token, let's implement uh, a proper here, a proper way to handle and secure your tokens and understand difference between ID token and access tokens and all the things around it. I'll see you in the next video.